This video is brought to you by Patreon. By signing up on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon, you get early access to all content, as well as grab bags of valuable cards and amazing mats exclusive to patrons. You can help keep coverage for Paper Magic alive by showing your support on the Fat Pack Magic Patreon today. Hello guys, and welcome back to Fat Pack Magic. Today we've got more Dark Side FNM Pioneer, and Vince Mello is bringing the hot and spicy cocoa against Hirschberger's Golas Ramp. Now, Golas Ramp is a interesting deck, Golas being a new creature that they put out in M20, and he's got a really funky ability. He's kind of like a big, chunky, solemn simulacrum. Now, both players are going to be on the mulligan, going down to six cards, and Hirschberger starts off, comes in swinging with an Aberyl Grazer, putting in a Garen Brig Castle into play tap. But Vince isn't going to let that slide. He's got a turn one Lenore Elf before he passes the turn back. Hirschberger plays out a Walking Blist on one, killing the Elf and dropping a land as well. Vince only has a Shock Land to put in tapped, but Hirschberger is hitting his land drops, getting to four mana, and playing out a Perilous Vault, the Covus Board Wipe, if you will. Now, Vince is kind of on defense here. That Perilous Vault, he needs to kind of get through it, but a good way to kind of get through a board wipe is to be able to draw cards. And while Hershberger is stuck on lands, his Perilous Vault isn't going to be able to activate with only four mana. But Vince has got the land drop, making a clue token, instantly getting value off that Tireless Tracker as he crashes in for three, bringing Hershberger down to 17 before passing the turn back. Hershberger puts a counter on that blast zone and then draws his land for turn. That's land number five. And here comes Golos, the namesake card of this deck. And it's going to put a land into play tap. Now the question is, what land does he want to get? He's got Ugin in hand. And right now, there's not a lot of pressure coming from Vince's side of the board. So it looks like he's going to get another Sanctum of the Forgotten Gods which is kind of like the uh, Temple of the False Gods, where it can tap for one mana, but once you have seven lands, it taps for two. So he gets that land and passes the turn, and end of turn, Vince is going to put out the Collected Company. And it looks like he's got a flyer and another flyer in the form of Selfless Spirit, which is going to make all creatures he controls get indestructible until end of turn. Now, this is... Uh, not a great position because Hirschberger can use that Perilous Vault next turn, so Vince doesn't want to commit any more to the board. However, he does have another collected company in hand. So he's going to put down a Breeding Pool into play, untapped, taking two life, and getting another count, uh, clue token as he crashes in with the team for seven damage. Now, the Selfless Spirit has flying, but that Aberyl Grazer has reach. And it looks like he's just going to take the 5 damage rather than risking his Golos against a Tireless Tracker that can pump up twice. There's his, la uh, his land that he needs to get to 7, and it's one heck of a land, a Radiant Fountain. It's going to gain him 2 life. Not that it matters much, because down comes Ugin. And that's not a card that Vince really wanted to see at this point in the game. Now he's going to have Collective Company to kind of bolster the ranks, but Ugin is going to be able to just blow up most of the field. And for only three loyalty counters too. The other option is Ugin can just start sniping stuff and maybe get through that way. But even still, Hirschberger has a Perilous Vault in play that... Oh wow, and the Sanctum of Ugin is going to allow him to search his library for another uh, spell. So it looks like he's going to activate Ugin, removing three counters, and he's going to exile uh, each colored uh, permanent with CMC four or, or three or less. And he's searching up a walking ballista with his Sanctum of Ugin, and Vince is bringing down another two creatures with the Collected Company. Unfortunately, they're not as powerful as I would like to see for a Collected Company. The Deputy of Detention is going to exile the Golos, and Llanowar Elves is great as well, but Ugin is at four loyalty. 
What Vince really needed there was some hard power to kill off that Ugin. And maybe that's what he's digging for by cracking a clue token. And he's gonna crash in for two at Ugin. And this is gonna bring Ugin down to two. But Vince can't really commit any more to the board. Hirschberger draws return, uses Ugin, kills off the deputy of detention, Golos comes back into play, and he's going to be able to search up for another land that's going to come to play tap, and Vince scoops it up. He can't win through that Ugin at this point in the game, and game one is going to go to the Hirschberger. Now get ready, because we're going to skip ahead just a second and go on to game two. I hope you guys are hungry for another round because Hershberger is serving up the mono green meats that can't be beat. And he's leading Vince 1-0 with Golos Ramp. Now this is a deck that really came out of nowhere. I was not expecting this. Band Collected Company is such a powerful deck and Vince managed to get out two of them and Hershberger just using Ugin to plow through the rest of Vince's deck. Now it looks like Vince is going to be on the play, and he's got a great turn one play. It's a Lanor Elves showing its stripes. What does Hirschberger have? And it's a Castle Garen break into play tap. Not my favorite play, but it's pretty good. You're just being able to get that tap land out of the way. However, Vince follows up with a Love Struck Beast, a 5-5 that only requires a 1-1 to attack. Hirschberger plays out a Radiant Fountain, and then a walking ballista, gaining two life and putting a plus one, plus one counter on that ballista. Now the question is, the ballista can block or it can ping one that Llanowar Elf. And that is a decision that Vince is really having to make. And on upkeep, uh, Hershberger decides to ping that Llanowar Elf, preventing Vince from getting that turn four mana. However, Vince has another Llanowar Elves and a Selfless Spirit, and that's going to start swinging in 5 damage at Hershberger, bringing him down to 17. Another the Colorless Land is going to find its way onto play, and Hershberger finds another Radiant Fountain from an Elvish Rejuvenator, bringing him up to 19 before passing the turn back to Vince. And that's the name of the game that Hershberger wants to play. It is... Uh, stall. Just basically stall until he can get that critical mass mana and with that Sanctum of the Forsaken Gods he can hit a lot of mana pretty quickly. Now Vince plays a land for turn, swings in for seven, and Hershberger used that Elvish Rejuvenator to fog five damage, only taking two and going down to 17. But Hershberger is at five mana here with his land for turn and what is coming? It looks like Golos. A Golos is going to come in, and what is it going to pick up? It looks like a Realm of the Forsaken Gods, and Vince sees danger, and he needs to get some pressure on the board fast. So he flashes in a Spell Queller at end of turn, and then crashes in for 7, 8, 9 damage. Hershberger, not wanting to Rick risk the Golos, takes all of it and dips down to 8. But the question is, does he have an Ugin in hand to follow up with? Hershberger draws for turn. Now he's got Spatial Contortion in hand, but he hits the critical mass of seven lands, tapping two to play out a Perilous Vault, but Perilous Vault is gonna get vetoed. Vince, drawing for turn. He has very limited time and Ugin can really mess up this game plan. Hershberger has to start blocking with the Golos, and even still, he's going to take 4 damage going down to 4. That Perilous Vault was critical. However, end of turn, he's going to use a Spatial Contortion on that Lovestruck Beast, giving it plus 3, minus 3. And in response, Vince is going to sack the Selfless Spirit so his Lovestruck Beast can live, but down comes a Blast Zone at 1. And more importantly, here comes an Ugin, and that is going to wipe the board. For a measly three counters, he exiles all the uh, creatures, or all non-land permanents with color uh, that's three or less. And Hirschberger just blowing through Nissa's Pilgrimage, the first one, and Nissa's Pilgrimage, the second one, searching up a ton of lands, Pinging events for 3 damage as well, bringing him down to 15. 
and passing the turn to Vince. And Vince only has a land and a scavenging ooze in hand. And that's gonna be his play for the turn. He needs to kind of uh, maybe make Hirschberger start targeting the ooze and maybe gain some power and toughness off the ooze as well. Hirschberger could plus and try and deal three damage to the ooze, but the ooze could gain two power and toughness in response and be a 4-4 and enough to kill off the Ugin on the backswing. But Hirschberger has a blast zone that could also take care of the ooze. Hirschberger deciding to remove two counters instead and exiling the ooze, preventing it from getting up there in power and toughness. And Vince has a great follow-up. Here's Tireless Tracker. Plays a land, here's a clue token, draws a card, putting a counter on the tracker. And these guys are just blazing through. Hirschberger puts the blast zone up to three and pluses Ugin to deal three damage to the tireless tracker. Vince is really struggling here. Ugin is going to be able to just take control of the game because now Vince has no permanence and Ugin is able to shoot Vince for three, bringing him down to 12. And Hirschberger playing the Radiant Fountain, just kind of buffering his life total, gaining two life. Vince was so close. He's got a Deputy of Detention in hand, but that's not gonna deal with Ugin, who's just gonna plus again, bringing Vince down to nine. And here's a Jaddy Offshoot, which is a 0-3 creature. And whenever he puts a land into play, he gains one life. And Vince is just gonna scoop. He can't get through an ultimate Ugin, and the match win goes to the Hirschberger. And wow, that, that was a stunning game. Collect a Company is usually such a powerful deck. However, Vince didn't see one in the second matchup, but even still, Ugin was just so oppressive and Hirschberger able to get it down so fast, ramping up lands, and then those lands tapping for two mana each. I mean, maybe he baited out the Perilous Vault with, uh, into the Dovin's Veto, but still, Ugin just showing his stripes is such a powerful card. And that's it for today on Fat Pack Magic. Stay tuned because we got three more rounds of FNM Pioneer, and these are all exciting, awesome matches coming up. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell to always get the newest updates when I put out new videos, and hit that like button because it makes me feel so good, warm, and fussy inside when you do it. And if you like these videos and you want to check out the behind the scenes footage, we have Instagram with all kinds of pictures, deck lists, all kinds of fun, crazy stuff. And if you like this content and you want to support us, check us out on Patreon. We've got gift bags, grab bags, exclusive playmats like the one you guys see on this video every time, the Mox Jet playmat. And once we hit the benchmark, I can finally start doing live Twitch streams of these events. We've got a Pioneer 1K coming out here in another week or two, and that means $1,000 to the top players. It's going to be huge, like more than the shop can usually hold on to, and we're going to really try and get that stream for you guys. So thank you guys so much for all your support. It really means a lot to me. But until next time, may all your packs be fat.